They have to bring their water to a rolling bowl for at least three minutes before they do any consumption. He hopes the community will remain patient as the city works to ensure the water is safe. We just ask that you use your water sparingly and we'll get through it. Jamie Mays, WLKY News. The city of Brandenburg says that they will let the community know when the results from the water samples are returned and the boil order can be lifted. For the second time in just four months, a chemical release has happened at a southern Indiana plant. The accidental chemical release happened just before 8 this morning at Bluegrass Chemical Plant on Industrial Boulevard in New Albany. Officials believe scrubbers became overwhelmed prompting the release. We're told that the chemicals dissipated quickly and there's no danger. A similar leak happened at the plant in March when a tank of solution used to clean metal overflowed. A grand jury will now hear the case of a man accused of fatally shooting a Kentucky sheriff's deputy during a traffic stop. Stephen Xiang Shang appeared in court virtually this morning. He waived his right to a preliminary hearing, and the case will now be sent to the grand jury. He's charged with murder and the death of Scott County uh, Deputy Caleb Conley. The Kentucky Attorney General's Office will handle the prosecution of Xiang Shang's Scott County case once it makes its way out of district court. I, I'm comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with AG's office and, and I've spoke with them this morning and I think they'll do a, a, a great job with the case and uh, just hope we can make it as swift as possible for the family, the immediate family of Caleb and his law enforcement family. Xiang Shang also faces charges in Lexington. This man is charged for the murder of a Southwest uh, Louisville person, Carlos Emilio Galeano Figueroa is accused of killing Victor Chavez on St. Anthony Church Road. According to the arrest report, the men were arguing Sunday night when Chavez was shot. Investigators say that he then carjacked someone to get away from the scene. And we've also learned new details about the drunk driving arrest of a Southern Indiana lawmaker, Jim Lucas. The police report says the state representative's pickup truck veered down a hill across traffic and through a guardrail on I-65 before he was arrested. The prosecutor has not decided if he will file criminal charges against the Republican from Seymour. Police found Lucas's badly damaged pickup truck nearly three miles away, parked behind a business. The arrest report said it had three flat tires, two of which had been worn down to the metal wheel rims. JCPS teachers are preparing for changes to the district's reading curriculum next school year. Today, thousands of them participated in training on the new reading program. For the first time in JCPS history, it will be the only curriculum used in every elementary and middle school. The $9 million program will shift the current lessons to focus on knowledge building and critical thinking. The method has been brought to a few schools already and improved the reading scores. So before we had over 150 different curricula or different programs that were being used, we never had a common language or consistent expectations across all grade levels. Throughout the summer, um, our schools are providing time to kind of go in and unpack and digest the curriculum um, so we can really learn and see how it's going to fit within our schools and how that's going to roll out and plan. Training for the new program will continue through the end of this week and then again in July. Frustration and anxiety this morning for passengers at Louisville's Muhammad Ali International Airport as the line to get through security seemed to keep growing. Take a look at this video. You can see it wrapped around the building, creating longer than usual wait times. Airport officials are expecting a record number of passengers between May and September. Summer travel is up 22 percent from 2019. Standard for Fields' busiest year yet. The big crowds aren't expected to go away anytime soon. The days of being able to get to the airport an hour before that flight are long gone. This is our new normal. If you miss your flight, you're done for. You gotta go back home, and then you're like, I gotta book this again. I gotta waste my money again. Airport officials recommend getting there at least two and a half hours early to avoid missing your flight, especially for departures between six and eight in the morning. Louisville Water says renovation work is about 75 percent done on one of the iconic symbols of the city, the. Historic water tower on uh, the Ohio River was in need of painting, repair on its metal siding and new ventilation system. The project cost uh, Louisville Water around $7 million. Built in 1860, the tower is the oldest ornamental water tower in the country. We want to continue to use this space as our story, you know, being able to tell the story of Louisville Water again, the innovation, the treatment, the quality of water. Um, it's a really important facility to us and a, su a super important facility to the city too. 
Right now, the project is in the painting phase. Everything is expected to be finished in the fall, which is when the museum will reopen to the public. This looks like any number of police chases that we've shown you, but there's something very different about this one. Find out what it is just ahead on the News at 10. Two people are dead and five others were injured after being shot at a high school graduation ceremony in Richmond, Virginia. Three of those wounded have life-threatening injuries. Another five other people were injured running back uh, into the theater where the commencement was held after the shots rang out. A 19-year-old is under arrest. Police believe that he knew at least one of the victims who were men aged 18 to 36. The field of Republican candidates for president is growing even more crowded. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie filed the paperwork for the run and formally launched his bid this evening at a town hall in New Hampshire. Two more candidates are expected to make their announcements tomorrow. Nicole D'Antonio has Commitment 2024 coverage tonight. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie has officially launched his campaign for the Republican nomination for president. I intend to seek the Republican nomination for president of the United States in 2024, and I want your support. At a town hall in New Hampshire Tuesday night, he positioned himself as the candidate willing to go after former president Donald Trump. Donald Trump made us smaller by dividing us even further and pitting one group against another Different groups pitted against different groups every day. Once a Trump ally, the 60-year-old is now focusing on New Hampshire voters after dropping out of his first presidential bid in 2016. Maybe we do need new blood. Maybe we do need somebody like, you know, Christie or DeSantis. Christie's announcement comes a day before former Vice President Mike Pence kicks off his campaign in Iowa. The answer, Iowa, is strong, conservative, Republican leadership. 
adding to an already crowded field that also includes Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, former United Nations Ambassador Nikki Haley, and South Carolina Senator Tim Scott. The next challenge for the candidates will be meeting the requirements for the first Republican debate in August, including making a pledge to support the eventual nominee. Notably, Donald Trump, who's leading the GOP pack in the polls, hasn't said whether he would sign such a pledge. He has hinted he may skip the debate altogether. Nicole D'Antonio, CBS News, the White House. And this evening, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum announced that he would join the GOP race in an op-ed article posted to the Wall Street Journal. A major dam in southern Ukraine has collapsed, flooding villages, endangering crops in the country's breadbasket, and threatening drinking water supplies. Ukraine accused Russian forces of blowing up the dam and hydro hydroelectric power station in an area that Moscow controls, while Russian officials blame Ukrainian military strikes in the contested area. Both sides are evacuating residents. Today, ceremonies were held to mark the 79th anniversary of D-Day. Nearly 160,000 Allied troops stormed the beaches of Normandy, France, on June 6, 1944, in the largest naval, air, and land assault in history. More than 2,500 Americans were killed in the invasion that led to the liberation of France from the Nazis and the end of World War II in Europe. Only a few thousand D-Day veterans are believed to be still alive. Just as a trial was set to begin, actor Cuba Gooding Jr. settled with a woman who claims he raped her. She says that Gooding lured her to a hotel room and then attacked her. Gooding maintained that it was consensual sex. The accuser was seeking $6 million in damages. Authorities have said at least 30 women have now made sexual misconduct allegations against Gooding. Prince Harry was in the London courtroom today testifying at a trial against British tabloids. The Duke of Sussex is among dozens of high-profile figures suing the Mirror Group newspapers. They claim that they were subject to phone hacking and other illicit means of obtaining private information. Harry lashed out at the papers for its treatment of his late mother, Princess Diana, and called for regulation of the British press. And this is a look at a police chase on an interstate in Michigan. What is the big deal, you say? Well, the driver involved is just 10 years old. State police say OnStar disabled the vehicle after the driver refused to stop. The little boy said that the car, he took the car because he wanted to drive to Detroit to see his mother. No one else was hurt. Now, your WLKY weather with Chief Meteorologist Jay Cardosi. All right, finally, 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 a little bit of impact weather looks to be on the way. Rain chances are going to be returning to the region very late tonight into the first half of tomorrow. Folks, this is not a huge rainfall event, but we'll take any a little amount we can get. The greatest rain chance will be tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. to about noon. And here's some good news, severe weather not expected across the region. Lots of haze out there earlier today and outside right now. We have cloudy skies, but it is dry. 87, it was a warm day. Morning start of 62. At this time, we're down to 79 degrees. Cloudy skies, the humidity 42%. A west-southwesterly breeze between 5 and 10 miles an hour. Okay, much of the viewing area is dry. But certainly you can see a few echoes on the radar scan, something we haven't seen for a long, long time, especially up around Cincinnati, a few blips on the scope, Jackson County, Lawrence County, Monroe County, and points off to the west. Not much happening, maybe a sprinkle, but the atmosphere is moistening some, and eventually more and more rain shower activity is expected to form. So there's one batch moving across mainly portions of southern Ohio, a few other showers as you can see across Illinois. Those expected to grow upscale and move into the region as the night wears on, being kicked off by a cold front. This front will continue to push its way southward slowly. That's what's going to bring us the rain chance for about the next 12, 15 hours or so. So let's talk about it. Midnight tonight, cloudy skies. There could be a couple of light rain showers in our far northern communities. Notice how that activity tries to expand around sunrise or so. I think we'll get several hours of at least occasional rain showers in here tomorrow morning. Allow extra time to get to your destination, certainly for the AM commute. Here it is though, noon tomorrow. Notice 
We're already on the back edge here in Louisville as this rain is rapidly pushing off to the south. Matter of fact, we'll go dry as we move deeper into the afternoon tomorrow and likely see some clearing as well. Some mid afternoon or late day sunshine will be returning and those temperatures will be in the 70s. As I mentioned, this is not a huge event, but beggars can't be choosers at this point in the game. I think most areas will end up with less than a half inch of rain. As we look out now to Thursday, oh my goodness, is it gonna be a beautiful day? Mostly sunny skies, a gentle north breeze, and uh, boy, those temperatures extremely comfortable, a mix of middle and upper 70s for afternoon highs on Thursday. Here's our forecast. Overnight tonight, cloudy skies, a few showers very late tonight, 66 on that low. Best chances for rain with this system come first half of the day tomorrow. As you can see, that's when we're expecting occasional showers and that impact weather. Otherwise, the rain ends. We dry out tomorrow afternoon with increasing late day sunshine. 75 the high. We're close to 80 as we move towards Thursday and Friday. A couple of great days there, Rick. Saturday looking fantastic, 88. Pick of the weekend, even Sunday, lots of dry time but a couple of showers will become possible again late in the afternoon and also Sunday evening. Hmm. So okay. it's not going to be a big rain, but again, at least we're going to get a little bit. And those lows getting dipping down the How about 50? that? Some How about free that? air conditioning. <laughs> yes, right? it is for yeah. sure. Thank you.